Hello everyone, my name is Verdan Gupta and today I will be discussing the primary source document from Richard Henry Lee to Samuel Adams, which dated back to, from March of 1785. I will also speak about the background of Lee and Adams as well as their political views. The freedoms that citizens of America today take advantage of is sincerely reliant upon the influences of Richard Henry Lee's initiative for independence of the American colonies from Great Britain. Lee is one of the few people who foresaw the opportunity to break away from Great Britain. Because he excelled, Lee was referred by many for his intellectual proficiency. His communication with Samuel Adams depicted how much passion and determination one man can put forth for their country. But who really is this man who strived to extinguish these treacherous fires from under our land? Richard Henry Lee, who was born in Westmoreland, Virginia in 1732, was brought up with a silver spoon in his mouth. Rich Richard was the fourth of eight children of Thomas and Hannah Lee's surviving kids. He received the best education any young man could ever dream of. At England's Wakefield Academy, Lee studied with many tutors daily. Lee did not restrict himself to one form of artistry, but instead dabbled in many various professions as well as expressed interest in traveling, similar to his father. Lee toured the mainland Europe, interacting with the outside world and learning more about the studies of law and politics. In 1757, Lee pursued his interest in politics by becoming the Justice of Peace in his native Virginia. All of his Lee's brothers had already decided to go into the political sphere. The following year, Lee received the honor to enter the Virginia House of Burgesses, where he proposed his first speech on the restriction to the prevalence of slaves. At this period in time, Great Britain began implementing proclamations and tariffs that restricted Americans from settling and trading. Lee saw that his people were being infringed upon and became the prominent opposing leader to the insensitive parliamentary acts passed. He protested the unbearable Sugar Acts of 1764 and constantly faced opposition against the Lords and Crown. Lee also assisted in the drafting of the Westmoreland Resolves, which included over 100 signers who strongly detested the inconvenient acts. These events were the decisive moments when Lee realized that independence with Great Britain was highly essential for the growth and prosperity of this unified nation. To prevent the success of this unjust system and union of counsel and action among all colonies is undoubtedly necessary, he said. He proposed that the only way to win foreign support was to completely separate an entire division with Great Britain and to dissolve any political connections and alliances with them, which he successfully persuaded his state into doing. With the assistance of John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, Patrick Henry, and Samuel Adams, Lee was able to call for a general congress in Philadelphia during which he advocated for national independence, foreign alliances, and a unified confederation. Thomas Jefferson produced a well-formulated document that explicitly stated America's dissolved relation with Great Britain. Along with Richard Henry Lee, Samuel Adams was another revolutionary activist who supported Lee's radical decisions in completely separating from America's lifeline, Great Britain. Samuel Adams was brought up in a very different environment than in his acquaintance, Richard Henry Lee. Unlike Lee, Samuel Adams was born in a New England colony and was the son of a merchant and brewer. Samuel Adams played in a prominent role in an activist group known as the Sons of Liberty against the ruthless British Acts. Although Samuel Adams and his cousin John Adams were on the same sides in defending colonial rights against British, they approached these issues differently. In the year of 1775, Sam Adams encouraged the creation of the Declaration of Independence and assigned Thomas Jefferson to complete this task. Over the Revolutionary War, the, around 1780 through 1790, Sam Adams became elected to the Massachusetts Senate and attended the Massachusetts Convention that convened to ratify the proposed federal constitution. Richard Henry Lee constructed a letter to Samuel Adams explaining that deviating from the status quo will only negatively affect the goal to make America an omnipotent empire. At the beginning of his message, Lee commemorates Samuel Adams for reaching out to him and reassures him that all of the favors Adams requested had been punctually presented in front of Congress. Lee also says that his late correspondence was due to his ill condition. 
Soon after the American Re victory in the Revolutionary War, Lee returned back to his family in December of 1798. Lee became exhausted of his arduous work and his health could not permit him to work anymore and thus he resigned from his seat in Congress later that spring. In Virginia, Lee was not only elected to join the Virginia legislature, but also continued to sit in the Virginia House of Delegates meetings. Unfortunately, his trip was ephemeral to the point where he returned to Philadelphia a month later. Lee eventually decided to rejoin the Congress in 1784 as the president under the Articles of Confederation. Additionally, Lee reflects on the values of learning from a friend. He says, it is the part of a friend to advise and of a well-disposed mind to profit from good counsel. According to Lee, the fight is not over. He explains to Sam Adams that the world is watching them, especially France and Great Britain, and that they are waiting for America to fail. Men must not start to become too proud of their victory to the point where they begin to neglect their duties. Also, tyrannical rulers often force their country into war. Lee strongly affirms that, the strong, that strong Christian virtues, such as benevolence, are what truly separates Americans from Great Britain. He is opposed to the method of revenge and instead supports bringing change through a well-ordered system. Lee emphasizes a crucial point in this portion of the letter when he talks about the innocent minds of the republics corrupted by, into imitating Great Britain's government. Lee urges that any European influences should be eradicated immediately because by emulating this design, Americans would be placing themselves into great danger. Lee alludes to King George's dictatorship when he discusses the issue of putting enormous power into the hands of one leader. The delegates that framed the revised Articles of Confederation circumvented from having to go through another malicious tyranny. This became the reason for the including the system of checks and balances, which limits the power of each branch of government. Lee insists that providing Congress with more power, not only will America have to form new confederations perpetually, but also any barriers created by the Articles of Confederation to protect natural rights of all men will be completely destroyed. In Great Britain during this time, King George would play the active role in making any and all decisions based on his perception of what he thinks will benefit his country. On the other hand, the Articles of Confederation would allow for the people to delegate representatives who then collectively converse on various means of building a prosperous nation. Lee continues by explaining how it would be treacherous for people who painstakingly liberated themselves from Great Britain to just hand over their rights to Congress. Additionally, he foreshadowed that the states assumed that the Tenth Amendment gave them the rights to nullify the Alien and Sedition Acts and would classify it as unconstitutional, but Congress denied this access to their privilege by later giving it to the judicial branch. These beliefs also surfaced during the ratification of the Constitution when Lee takes part in the Anti-Federalist Political Party. His participation and affiliation with the party also led to the widely held but mistaken notion that Lee authorized, which was a series of anonymously penned anti-federalist essays collected under the title Letters from the Federal Farmers to the Republican. Lee stated that while corruption is unfortunately inevitable, an infallible system of government can prevent this. No changes should be admitted until proved to be necessary by the fairest and fullest and most nature experience. In simpler terms, Lee did not believe that any changes should be amended or announced until the foolproof plan had been devised, discussed, and constructed. Lastly, Lee addresses the issues of imposts on state legislatures by stating that the federal government should not put a uniform tax on every single state, nor the demand the payment of debt, but instead, they must determine the amount every single state must pay and allow states to collect the funds through their own individual means. He said, if a spirit prevails to neglect a duty imposed by the Confederation, may not the same spirit render abortive at any time acts passed for granting imposts? Lee simply believed that nothing prevents a person from failing to pay taxes if they neglect their duties delegated to them by the Confederation. He considers that instead of fantasizing over current debts, money should be allocated towards securing a better future. 
In his letter to James Madison, he, Lee also discusses the severity of this pressing issue and what it would be necessary to resolve it. It is the natural for men to fly from oppression to ease. And whilst our taxes are extremely heavy and North Carolina and Georgia pay little or no tax, it is not to be wondered that so many of our people flock to these states and unfortunately they are carrying to Georgia and South Carolina the cultivation of tobacco. Lee thought that the people traveled to North Carolina and Georgia simply to evade paying taxes. The Articles of the Confederation explicitly states that the taxes placed in order to support the common treasury will always will be made and collected by the state legislature by date decided by Congress. When Lee stated that whilst every good man wishes great punctuality to prevail in payments of debt, he must at the same time condemn and discourage large importations which imperish. He meant that while people wish to be punctual in paying off their debts, it is these payments which cause them to incur more debts. Lee concludes by saying that it is patriotic to pay off their debts, and thus reasons to let states perform this task of patriotism as they prefer. In the last lines of his letter, Lee says that there is nothing he would wish more than to visit his old friend Samuel Adams in Boston. But unfortunately, his health did not permit him to do so at the time. As it can be concurred, Richard Henry Lee's experiences led him to detest the idea of a powerful central government. He strongly believed that dispersing power amongst the states would eliminate any chances of corruption. Lee passionately protested the idea of European councils and consistently advocated the practicing of Republican virtues such as equality and collective decision-making. His works are amongst those that have shaped the country and continue to do so. Lee's ideas continue to inspire new political leaders across the world. Thank you for taking time to learn more about this revolutionary activist and his correspondence.